so the new t20 league was launched uh, the name was revealed of course i mean not launched exactly but the name was revealed and we're going to be chatting about it on today's show and we're going to talk about the, the press conference that took place what came out of that press conference um, how the tournament will be structured and all the nitty-gritty things that you guys need to know about the tournament we're going to get all that information out to you guys if you've missed the coverage this morning of it on various news channels etc and various news sites many people would have obviously had a say on this particular tournament and given their own point of view but i thought this would be a perfect opportunity for us to give our point of view on what this particular tournament is about how it's going to be structured the auction etc all of those things that are we going to be talking about let's get into that straight away but before we get going, before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button, please. Please smash the like button, comment and share. Also get involved with the free issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. Every issue actually is 100% free. Subscribe to it right now and get every issue free straight to your inbox every month. The link is on the screen as well as, as in the description. And also if you want to help us grow South African cricket, promote South African cricket and get involved with South African cricket, then please become part of the Patreon account. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. You can also become, get, follow all of our updates on clickerfanaticsmag.com. Actually, the article that we'll be reading out today on the show to give you guys an understanding is on clickerfanaticsmag.com. So you can go ahead and read it. We won't read the whole piece out for you, just a couple of the highlights. And, and then we'll get a discussion going and see what we come up with with regards to that. So, guys, get involved with the Super Chat, please, um, as well, if you want to get any of your questions asked on the show. So let's get going. Let's get straight into today's video. Looking forward to discussing all of this with you guys. See you on the other side. A very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine. This is your daily show, basically a news update of what happened with regards to the SA20. That's what it's going to be called, the new T20 competition for South Africa. Um, we're going to discuss all the details about it. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. Welcome to the show, Werner. He's going to be my co-host tonight. We're going to be discussing it. We're going to be talking about the, every single little detail that came out of this particular um, press release and obviously press conference at uh, the Graham smith gave this morning so let's just first get into the nitty-gritty stuff before i get into the discussions with Werner. so first and foremost um you first have to know that the new league has been named and announced with the first game starting on the 23rd of january 2023 that's the logo in, in the top they're doing the xx for 20 is a 20. i know i looked at the double x thing and it was giving me uh, connections to machine gun kelly so i was a little bit like oh you guys are stealing mgk's double x thing but it's okay it's been used in many other aspects of life as well i'm just pulling everybody's leg and joking with you there but this is the stru structure of the tournament. This is how the teams are going to be structured. There's going to be 17 players per, per squad or per team, 10 players local per team, and then seven international players per team. I, I think it's better actually that they actually uh, say squad instead of team. I don't know why they specifically said team. I think it would have been better for an understanding to say squad. But it was this is what was was obviously written in 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 the media and on social media etc. The playing eleven will have seven local and four overseas players maximum. The auction date will be on the nineteenth of September, and each team will have a total budget of two million rand or oh, two million dollars sorry to spend, up to twelve players with seventeen being the maximum amount of players in each squad. Then I'm going to go quickly and show you guys the teams. Um, these are the names. Um, at the top of the video, we got the Durban Super Giants. They released a video recently on social media as well, and I got a video to my WhatsApp as well of their unveiling. So it says Super Giants in their particular name, so I'm taking it that the Durban Super Giants was in that particular reveal video. We've got Quentin the Cock, Jason, Jason Holder, uh, Kyle Mayers, Ree Stockley, and Brennan and Subrayan in that particular team so far that have been picked up. Then we've got Johannesburg Super Kings with Faf Duplessis, Moeen Ali, um Maish Tikish uh Tikshana. I always pronounce the name wrong. I'm trying to get it right. Uh Romario Shepherd and then Gerald Kutsia. Then we've got my Cape Town or 
Mumbai, Indian, Cape Town, Kahiso Rabada, Deoville Previs, Rashid Khan, Sam Karan, and Liam Livingston. You've got the Paul Royals with Josh Butler, David Miller, Obed McCoy, and Gorman Bosch. And then the Pretoria Capitals only announcing, I think, two names. Maybe if Werner saw anything else, he can maybe update us if he's heard anything else. Um, but Anrich Nokia and Michal Pretoria is being confirmed over there. And then Sunrises, Eastern Cape with Aidan Markram and Odmil Bartman. We've also got this particular release um, that was released recently to us. Um, I mean, obviously, this morning when the, the piece came out, there was a press release that is at the bottom. I've attached it to this particular article. But I want to show you guys basically just some of the quotes um, by Graham Smith that, that mainly stood out to us, um, and to me at least. Um, he said, this is an opportunity for us to introduce ourselves as we are building to the auction on September 19. A play group will be SA focused, but we've also got an ex extensive list of international players lined up for the auction. We are still finalizing details of lots and sorts of players, um, player resignation, um, registration, sorry. A short list will be created for the auction, a list of who has already signed that will be made public soon. The, the million purse um, includes the, the pre-signed players. Interesting to know that as well. The Big Bash Leagues is only until early New Year's before our league starts. They'll be released to players for the SAT20 in January. SA has played T20 before. We're just excited and we're now at the level where we can stand alone because we've reached international standard. The women's element is also 100% in our plans, especially now with us hosting the women's league. I just I just want to to want wanted to be feasible this year, but it's uh, no, it just wasn't feasible this year, but it's definitely in the pipeline, so they wanted to be feasible. Butchering this, at least seven of, of the playing 11 are going to SA based, so we don't foresee any problems with navigation having international players on our teams. We also have a local players international standard and are focusing heavily on getting even more of our local players to that level. There's a deal with Supersport, but we have started discussion with the radio and are looking for another other ways to bring the game to the people. Come talk to Cricket Fanatics magazine, guys. That's what we do. Uh, we're trying to get the game to the people. So just th so that you guys can see quickly, we did post it and upload it on the channel, but here's the reveal video. If you guys want to have a look at the reveal video, I'm going to obviously have to reshare it with you guys again because there's no sound. Um, I'm going to add Aditya to the show as well. Welcome to the show, brother. Good to see you. I know you're busy working on your on your magazine article for the for the magazine that's coming out soon. Um, so he, he's giving us a little bit of his time to discuss um, certain things here, guys. So that's at least he's here with us. Um, I'm going to share it, the video with you guys, the reveal video with you guys, so that you do have it on the show. At least then everybody will have access to this particular, um, to, to, to this little video to be able to show you guys exactly um, a little pack. I would call it a little tournament pack so that you guys can understand what is going on within the particular tournament. So um, let me just check if this is the correct one. Yes, it is. It's not the Durban one, I think. I hope. Okay, so that's the reveal, the reveal video for all of you guys. Now let's get into the discussions. Um, let's get your thoughts, Verna and Aditya. I would like to hear what you guys have to say. What do you think of the new logo? What do you think of the reveal? I mean, this morning the press conference was pretty bland. There weren't too many people that attended it. So there was only a couple of questions asked. Pretty straightforward answers. 
majority majority of it is in our piece on the site. So Werner, let's start with you. You were quite active on, on social media today, um, talking about the, the league and getting people up to, to date with what is happening and what how everything works. So, so give me your thoughts on, on this particular unveiling and what you think of the new league um, and the, the colours, the themes, etc. Everything we've spoken about today. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited for the league. Um, I guess not necessarily the most imaginative name ever, um, but I like the I like the the colour scheme and the, the branding and stuff. It, it it looks decent. I just hope they they made they do the do it properly uh obviously it's going to be crucial to make the the first ever tournament of this for south africa it's going to be crucial that they do it right the first time because if you don't start with a bang you'll struggle to to get to that level where they want to it to be so it's going to be very important to to start very well um i i was a bit uh, torn between the fact that there will only be 10 local players potentially per side um and the fact that i know it's probably the only way they could have gone to to make it financially good for the tournament I, well, i'm not really putting that right but it I, i'm not surprised by the way they've gone about it i just hope in future we will see the squads maybe becoming a little bit bigger maybe add two sides whatever the case may be so that we can see more of our local players coming in because obviously now seven overseas players per side and then there will also be a bunch of pro tiers playing so there won't be as many domestic players that some of the overseas um audiences might not have seen before because that's that's normally a very nice thing to to tune into you you get to see new people that you don't know you don't know how well they perform and then suddenly they're performing in a, in a biggish league like this and that's that's the type of things i enjoy watching so hopefully we'll still see some of that this year but hopefully going forward we'll we'll see it expand a bit more and we'll see more of those guys come in hopefully they'll they'll come as something like a rookie rule i know we've been speaking about it a bit on on social media and so that we'd like to see something like a rookie rule um rule maybe get an there has to be an under 19 player per side or there has to be somebody that only has a few caps at the basic level but not due to not being good enough but just there hasn't been the opportunity or whatever the case may be um but uh, in terms of this league it's looking it's looking decent um we still need to see how what the draft will be or what the the player list will be for the auction um it'll be interesting to see what which overseas players will be in that list i'm sure there will most of the domestic players will have put their names up um for that auction list which i'm sure will come out in the next couple of weeks um leading up to the auction on 19 september so that'll be interesting to see who are the overseas players that will actually be available to be picked um, mm -hmm. in the auction or be bid on um it's going to be very interesting. I, I I know it's 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 a bit tough with us clashing with the UAE league. There's a lot of big signings already in the UAE league, so that makes it a bit more difficult. Um, but uh, it it should still be good. We have a few big names already. Hopefully, the the our strong domestic players get the most of the spotlight. Um, I think that's probably what's going to differentiate us between the SA T20 league and the UAE one is that they're going to have like eight or nine overseas players per side, which is wild. Um, but I think our domestic structure is pretty strong. And I think that that's probably going to be a difference. Hmm. Aditya, I mean, quite a bit of overseas players that we, we put into our squad. Um, I, I, I guess we, because we know that it's money, money that they're after um, to try to maximize the amount of profit they can make from this tournament, then you look at it and you're like, maybe that makes sense. From for for a immediate um, uh, cure for the situation that we find ourselves in in South Africa, it's uh, I don't like the fact that it's a stopgap. It's an immediate fix. Um, I would like like Werner said, I would have liked to see a little bit more emphasis being given to the likes of, for example, rookies, younger domestic cricketers that maybe don't get the opportunity to be seen on the global stage, that don't get to play IPLs, BPLs, all of these type of things, but have the talent to be good T20 cricketers. What's your thoughts on the makeup of the of the teams, the 17-man squad, of course, and then and the way it's split up with regards to overseas players, etc.? Uh, look, I think overseas players in any tournament, 
including the IPL, are significant driving factors in the success of the tournament. Um, and you know, I understand. I understand um, Werner's hesitation though with just ten local players per team. Uh, but I think what I can say is that over a period of time, these re- these rules can be reviewed. You know, so if you look at the if you if you look at the rules that the IPL had starting in 2008, very different to what we see now. So these things change because it's not like the tournament is going to be run in the same way for for the rest of our lives. You know, there will be changes, there will be measures taken to ensure that you know the cricket becomes more entertaining, more teams are added, perhaps. So the IPL, for example, it didn't start as a 10 team tournament. You know, it, it started off as eight. Um, so I think it's a good starting point. And, um, you know, in time, there will be more players that will get opportunities. Uh, but mm-hmm. this right now is probably South Africa's best opportunity to, to expose young players to uh, high pressure situations playing alongside international superstars and uh, basically having the sort of infrastructure that uh, that the IPL does to a very large degree. So, you know, I think that would be that would be hugely beneficial, you know, and let's not forget that even for a, like a lot of the domestic players that are that have been selected for the tournament that will play the tournament, they're going to share their experience with other players. It's not like the players who are not playing the tournament won't benefit directly from it. They will, uh, but it just take them a little while, a little while longer to actually get picked for it. Uh, so, I understand if if there are reservations there, but um, you know there is. It's a starting point, you know, and it can only get better from here on. Yeah, and also interesting to know as well, um, Werner, that the. Uh the current players that have been selected already um, and, and picked from different teams, that's part of the 2 million cap as well. So in actual fact, um, it's not actually 2 million each team gets, you know, you're going to minus, obviously we start off with, and you can look at the likes of the Capitals and the likes of the Eastern Cape team. They decided to only get two players from their budget. They want to try and sign the rest. So we saw this a lot in the auctions at the IPL. We were talking about, you know, players going unsold etc and then players pick, and then teams picking up players like david miller for cheap you know later on so it might be a strategy for some of the teams they probably already have in their head um already ideas of who they want to target before they get the actual list and see who's on the list but they would probably already know already in their head a kind of vibe that they want to get but let's look into this auction are you excited about what this auction can do for some cricketers i mean i know it's 10 only and 10 7 split at the moment but do you uh, this will be able to i wouldn't say weed out but put the real true domestic t20 cricketers that that have the skills they're going to put them onto uh, onto the market ultimately everybody's going the whole world's going to be able to see what these players are capable of hopefully some of these youngsters or some of these good t20 domestic cricketers burst through and find a, find a franchise if we talk about some of them who do you think Werner, maybe will stand out, do you think we'll, we'll maybe get one of the top picks in this particular round? If you're looking at the CSA domestic T20 scene and some guys that maybe you would, if you were one of the auctioners, um, part of one of the teams, who would be one of the comes, couple of the names that would be on your list first? Yeah, before I get to that, it'll be interesting to see because obviously now it's it's overseas owners, right? It's IPL owners, yeah. basically. Um, it'll be interesting to see who the coaches will be. Um, I've heard rumors that JP Dumini might be part of the poll group and Stephen Fleming um, at uh, Joburg with with the the Super Kings uh, team. Um, but it will be very interesting to see because it's going to be important for them to 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 select the right domestic players to get into their sides because obviously those owners don't necessarily know the best of all our talent. They might have seen some of them, they might have seen stats, um, but it's not always all down to stats. So it'll be interesting to see which teams will be coached by by who i hope there will be plenty of south african coaches as well um i don't just want to see overseas coaches i want to see south african coaches and assistant coaches or 
mm. batting coaches or whatever it, it, it might be. But in terms of in terms of players, yeah, before probably, you before, yeah. before you move on to the players, that's an excellent point you made. I just want to touch on that first before we move on. I would have liked to see the local team coaches, like our franchise coaches, take over those particular roles as team coaches and pick, pick their staff. It would have been really nice for the domestic teams of each particular province to maybe take over those coaching. I don't understand why they, they don't go that direction, maybe because of connections of the past. But if it's connection in the past and we're hearing rumors about the Royals and JP, I would have thought my Cape Town would have been more of a fit for him with his Mumbai connection. So I would have liked to see the local teams, because obviously JP is the coach of the Rocks. Um, so I would have liked to see the coaches at the various franchises that have those particular grounds that those coaching staff and those coaches get an opportunity. I mean, majority of the players they play with, they they are with them for the majority of the year anyway, as well. You know, so they know the players a lot better. They work in and out with those players, especially the ones that you want to be loyal to from the franchise. But maybe to an extent, they 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 may be trying to remove the bias to pick your own players. You know what I mean? Maybe perhaps that is maybe the the thought process. But I would personally like to see. Um, franchises get um, preference with regards to the coaching roles that are currently in place. But let's move on from that, um, um, and Werner, and get your thoughts on the players. Yeah, we don't know yet. It, it might still end up happening. They might get um, the maybe Robin Peterson will be like an assistant coach, or maybe a head coach at um, at the what's the side now? Uh, the Sunrises Eastern oh, Cape. Sunrises Eastern. Um, he, he, he might be there, so it, it might end up happening in any case. So we'll we'll have a good look and see what happens. I, I hope that they do get some sort of role within those those sides. Um, so players, um, I I I'd probably go for what is your most destructive batters and who the all the big all rounders that can come through and really balance your side out. So if you go for a destructive batters, probably first names that will come to mind is Donovan Ferrara, Wesley Marshall, um. Maybe somebody like uh, a John John Smuts who also brings an all round role. Um, if you want to go very experienced, might bite from Boyun. Boyun has always done very well domestically. Um, I'd look at somebody like um, Delano Potriter, definitely. Delano Potriter, somebody I would, I would pay good money for. Obviously, I think most of the teams will probably bet high for Stubbs now that he has really shown at international level and he's now playing overseas and all of that so but but in terms of domestic that's probably the main guys i'd go for there's good bowlers maybe somebody that also brings an all-round role is somebody like a fresco adams we, we might not be as a bigger name as some of the other players so you could get him maybe for a good good steal um i like the the look of cody Youssef um coming through last season Darren the pavilion there's this there's, there's really plenty of talent to go for but i think I think the all rounders will probably be high in demand. So anybody that can bring two roles, like you saw that um, the Power Royals picked um, Corbin Bosch as their uncapped player, which is probably a smart pick. And you see that the Pro Pretoria Capitals have picked Michal Pretorius, also an all rounder. So it, it's it's been quite smart picks from them, even though they might not be like the huge names. Um, so and I, on the on the point of of burning through the budget almost um or, or having to work around that first five picks i think the mi side probably used at least 50 percent of their budget already <laughs> yes. just getting those huge names so they have kg <laughs> they have, they have kg sam curran they have brevis they have rashid khan and they have livingston right so that's 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 like that's like five of that's you'll play all five of them in your 11 and they all bring you a mains balance because most of them can either bat and ball or at least do well in one of them uh, well can add a bit on the on the other side so they have already a strong core right there but it also means they have a lot less to play with during the, um, the auction time so it'll be interesting to see how they do balance it and then on the other side how will the Pretoria side and the Eastern Cape sides who've only picked the two players how would they go about um, uh, going at the auction it's, it's going to be interesting I, I actually want to watch it live I won't probably won't be able to it'll be at a time when I'm at work but it, it, it'll be very interesting to see how it does go I, I heard Smith talking about it being a five six hour type of thing so you'll be able to see everything live almost like they do during the IPL 
mm. like a live live auction so you'll see this team is bidding for that this team is bidding so that'll be very interesting to see who, who does make the cut i i'm hoping for a few good surprises um i'd love some great stories to come out of this i mean i can just imagine if somebody like a show america pops up in the auction yeah and they start bidding for him it, it would like change his life so it, it it's it, i would love stories like that coming through so I, I would love a couple of Division 2 players to maybe sneak in there. I'd suspect it's going to be mostly Division 1, especially if there only be a limit to like about 60 overall. Um, it's it's going to be tough. Um, there are definitely people who are going to miss out and we're going to be <laughs> not... We're going to... There's not much you can do, really. Um, in that case, it's going to be bad for them, but it does also like bring that incentive to, import, to really perform well in the, the domestic T20 league. Uh, mm -hmm. the domestic t20 competition the csa t20 so that's probably going to be only at the end of september that's already after the auction so it's not going to help for this year maybe as a replacement player i don't know if it's going to be the same sort of thing that it is in the ipl where if somebody gets injured you can call up a replacement player from somebody that was on the auction list so that's a possibility so there's still plenty of to play for domestically if you don't make um this one of the six sides already this year so that's that's something that, that I think should amp up the competition domestically because these players will now know there's something to play for here. We can make some good money um, in the league. If we do well domestically, we will be picked up um, potentially in, in the league. And that, that should really um, amp up the stakes in the competition. It's not just playing to be the winner of the, the, the competition, but also playing for individual spots trying to really stand out above the rest of your teammates as well in in in, in a certain sense mm. i mean i did the, the 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 budget looks quite quite low i mean one of the players in the apl goes for two million sometimes so <laughs> uh, I, I guess that the, the 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 prices or the amount of money that players will go for is not going to be as astronomical as we previous would have thought um, it's not going to be crazy astronomical numbers. I guess we'll grow slowly, and 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 more and more will be put into that pot in the future, which is a nice way to start. We're not we're not sitting with our whole massive budget and don't know how to spend it. Um, so your thoughts on that and how it's going to run the auction? Give us some insights from the from the IPL auction as well. We'll obviously do probably a show where we talk about all the snubs <laughs> afterwards. Um. Okay. So again, um going to go back to IPL 2008 where there was a certain cap right I think the highest the highest paid at the time was somewhere around like four and a half crore you know which at the time was one point what 1.5 million dollars but the exchange rate was was way lower for us at the time one dollar was equal to 40 odd rupees now one dollar is equal to 80 rupees so i think that should tell you what the difference was so and i think that was ms Dhoni, by the way who got a uh, four crore and the highest this year was i think kr rahul who got 18 crores so it's been a four times increase in in the amount of money that the highest player the highest paid players have got um so yes, so for South Africa as well, I think it's uh, the budget that's set for a team, the cap that's set for a team is, is obviously to get a sense of what viewership is like, because when viewership increases, when your, your broadcast deals are more lucrative, then your team budgets will, will go up. There's, there's no question about that because yeah. Again, at the time when the IPL started, you know, the broadcast deal was the broadcast deal for the first three years was was at the bare minimum. You know, the IPL at, at the time had not even broken even. It is post 2011 that the IPL started becoming a profitable enterprise. And it's only now that it's become mm -hmm. like a multi billion dollar uh, sort of sort of product. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's going to change with South Africa. So at the moment, $2 million for a 17-member squad is is a bit low. But I think they're just <laughs> testing the waters. Yeah. They're only Probably testing are, the yeah. waters. And, and yeah. everyone knows that. Like, all the players involved would know that, for sure. And I guess also the amount of... The, 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 they know they're going to have to use their budget sparingly and wisely. 
I think that's a good thing, actually, the low budget. If I come more and more, I'm thinking about it because they're going to have to, they're going to then have to find gems, guys that are worth the money. If they can get players for for, for cheap that are that that are really good value players, um, it might be able to help them um, find a little bit more gems in this tournament, hopefully. I'm hoping that that will be the case, that that the, that the auctioners will think of it in that way and be smart with the way they spend it and not just splash all their money on the, on the main name brands, which which is kind of happens in these type of, of tournaments. But looking forward as well, I, I think what I like about the the SA tournament is how we are as a as a group are going to cover it too. It's going to give us access as well, which is which I'm going to be very excited about. Hopefully. But I think also in this auction, I think besides the all-rounders that Vern has mentioned, based on the grounds that we will obviously be playing at, we've got the likes of Durban that has a ground, we've got the likes of Kabeja, you've got the likes of Newlands. Um, there's only necessarily, you're talking about Pretoria now and Johannesburg, you're talking about those two ones that are maybe more seamer-friendly wickets with regards to um, getting your seamers in. But in, even in the recent, in January, that period, it's going to be a lot of dry wickets that are going to happen. If the if the heat is going to be as hectic as we are predicting that it's going to be this time around this year, I, I think there's a bit of a prediction that it's going to be quite a hot summer. I'm, I'm predicting that. I don't know if it is going to be. I haven't, I'm not a weather guru, but I have that sort of feeling inside myself that it's going to be a hectic summer and hot summer in South Africa. So I think spinners are also going to be very, very key. Which spinners they pick for which teams. Um, the likes of um, Dawood, we've got Manak, we've got um, um, many other spinners as well. Mahima, uh, is, that's there as well, that have performed very, very, very well in domestic T20 leagues. So I think they are going to be Senator Mutasami. Obviously, Sabrain has been picked up already by Durban. Um, so we've, we're going to have a lot of these spinners. Bryce Parsons as well, someone that's that's fresh, that's that's a batting all rounder. Is going to be, I think, is going to be quite a person that people are going to look at because they they're going to want a batter that can bat in the top order and bowl a little bit as well. I think that's also a very key factor that they're going to be thinking of, of when they're picking teams. Um, and it's also going to be very interesting to see which wicket keepers are picked because there are not many of them to go around. I would say that you would look at in the t20 format i think in other formats maybe we've got guys that are a little bit more nailed on but in the wicket keeping department you've got the likes of grant rulofson who is who's an excellent um talent a young upcoming talent that a lot of people are looking at senator mcclashile is another person we've got an awesome um youngster that will also be at at the power rocks which i hope will get picks up in an abbey um, someone that we didn't get to see too much of, and I'm hoping to see more of him because I've heard that he's a pretty good, pretty decent talent and a brave cricketer. We've got the likes of Ryan Rickleton in the mix there as a wicket keeper. There's many, many wicket keepers that are out there that we can talk about. Um, yeah, someone's mentioning Klaassen in the in the mix as well. So I think those those key specialist positions are going to be are going to be very big for South Africa. The all round. I believe the you keepers. haven't said Verena Khalid. Well, Verena is a given. Uh, I, I don't even talk about Verena because he's a pro tier. <laughs> so he's a given with my eyes. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of talented um, batters. I see Lauren saying Nicky van der Berg. You know, is there going to be space I'm, for all of them? There won't be. But on the on the point of, of slow turning wickets, as much as you look at those, those spinners, which is definitely going to be important, especially when you look at um, the Eastern Cape and Durban, you also want to look at who are your best batters against that. Because if you're going to be based in the Eastern Cape, which obviously the Sunrises are, um, I've, I'm thinking that the reason, one of the reasons they went for only two players so far is to go big for Tristan Stubbs. I'm thinking, I'm thinking they're going to go all out for Tristan Stubbs to get him there because he knows those conditions so well and he's a very good player against spin. So that is going to be a different type of way of thinking about this slow wicket. You don't just want to think, okay, good spinners, that's what we need. You need players that can adapt to those type of conditions, not mm -hmm. guys that just who are just good playing in the eye foul. So maybe somebody like a Don and Vin Ferrara, Ferrara is not used to playing those type of conditions as much. So you'd want him up there at the Pretoria Capitals or the Joburg um, Super Kings, but you don't necessarily want him down at um, the Sunrises or at the Durban Super Giants or whatever they're called. Um, so it, that's going to be interesting because you can see domestically which players are better players of spin than others. And so those guys are probably 
um, of those teams at the coast are probably going to have to go for for them. Yeah, very good points made there, Aditya. I mean, you will know more than anybody the the value of spinners <laughs> in these type of tournaments, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, the thing is, in in any sort of T Twenty tournament, you know, you do want to have a certain balance, right? You know, Rashid Khan, no matter where he plays in the world, is an asset. You know, and I guess that's why. You know, am I were my Cape Town was so keen on mm. on having on having Rashid Khan, right? He commands like the Adelaide in Adelaide, the the strikers are, are always keen on having Rashid. You know, and um, it's he's probably sort of redefined spin in T Twenty in Australia because you know who would have thought that in in the bowlers. You're going to have a spinner who's going to be picked instantly in the draft, knowing that his time is probably going to be divided between the strikers and and the South African league. So yeah, it's uh, spin is definitely an important part of any T20 league, and uh, there's there's no question that uh, changing weather patterns in South Africa as well will contribute to spinners succeeding a lot more. So I think with the, with the next couple of years, you're going to see the development of a lot more. Shamsis and Keshav Maharajas from South Africa. Yeah, I'm hoping that this tournament will reveal that. Um, let's talk a little bit of politics. Uh, let's get into some politics over here with regards to like the money coming into this tournament and what we'd like them to do with the, with the money that, that comes into this tournament. There was a lot of talk about that a lot of this will be going back into domestic cricket and I really, really hope so. Um, there was some awesome discussions on wake up and smile the cricket um some of the guys talking about that the, the grassroots level is going to be so important um but when you get lump sums of money like that where do you start Werner? um because there's going to be a massive increase of i feel school children are going to look at this league and be like you know guys maybe we can play in this league in a couple of years time etc um there's a lot of young kids that are going to be looking at this tournament now, hopefully, and say, you know what, there's at least some incentive in cricket. But if you had to take the money and, and invest it, where, where where do we go first? Where do we invest this money in first? Um, is it do we do we start worrying about the pipeline between domestic cricket and international cricket to try and strengthen that? Do we try to actually strengthen domestic system? Do we push it down in division two? Do we go over to club cricket? What where do we start with that? Yeah, it's a tricky one because I think firstly, the, at least the first couple of years, we probably won't be seeing any profits, right? So the, the first couple of years, it might be a bit tricky to say exactly where are those funds going to because we might be operating it, operating at a bit of a loss. Um, but I definitely want to see them um, going, putting a lot of money into the grassroots development. Um, I'd love to see schools that don't generally get the same type of opportunities and maybe some of the the bigger known schools um getting proper facilities getting equipment for for the players because we often talk about there's not enough um, black african batters coming through but it's generally or, or or poorer communities it's not coming through but it's generally because equipment is so expensive and i'd love to see some of the funding at least going in towards that i'd love to see if we, if we think about it internationally it going in towards um, us being able to play more test cricket again going forward, maybe in the next, not not in this FTP cycle that's coming now, but maybe the next one saying, okay, but we've now got that money because of this league. So now we're able to host three test matches at the stage again, not two, two test matches like we will do now. Um, maybe we can go overseas more, play more test. I, 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 for one, would love to see more test cricket as well if, we're, if I'm thinking international cricket. Um, but domestically, definitely important grassroots, the Division 2, Division 1. I think a lot of it will come down to how many people will be able to see it. So will we be able to broadcast it on the SABC by somehow giving them a discounted rate because we have that extra funding so that we can so that more people are able to see this tournament because if it's only on super sport it's only going to be a, a small percentage of south africa specifically that will be able to watch it overseas obviously it will be the normal through the normal routes through super sport and and they will see it on their channels but um domestically it's going to be important that a lot of ICs um, see this tournament and can look up to it and say okay well 
this is an opportunity. Maybe I was thinking about not continuing with cricket after school, um, not pursuing it, maybe doing something else as a career. But now looking at it, thinking, oh, this is a viable opportunity because not only does this mean I might get into this league and might get paid more, but if I can do that, then that also means if I perform there, I might be spotted to go to the IPL or the PSL or the one of the various T20 leagues across the world might recognize my talent. And so that that is an important factor. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm hoping mostly grassroots, domestic. It's it's okay. Look, I don't know everything that goes on in the background exactly where the funds are needed the most. Um, I'm sure there are people that are a lot more informed than yeah, can can really yeah. make make that call. But uh, I'm just hoping it goes to the right places. Let's have, please, no more maladministration. We've had enough oh, of that. Please. I don't want to be sitting here in 10 years' time saying, oh, no, 60% <laughs> of the budget went to to catering for all the IPL owners or 60% went to this and that and this and that. I just want it to be used for the right reasons. If If 40% of it goes to proper marketing, I'll be fine with that. Give give the mm. tournament, give domestic because right now there's no marketing for four day matches in South Africa. You hardly see any crowds for Red Bull cricket in South Africa, right? Nothing. At so all I mean, you can go to a Titans Lions game with even some of the South African players playing. You'll see two ten people in the crowd. There's there isn't yeah. a, you can't call it the crowd. Um, so I'd I'd like to see a lot better marketing for all our our domestic competitions. Mm. So even if if some of the money goes towards that. I would already be um, happy. I mean, in, in during COVID, there was more um, fake mannequins in the stands than there were crowds on a normal day in, out of COVID. Guys so... running around with nets of football. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so that, that's, that's another thing I, I, I want to quickly, um, I, because I'd lo- I always loved the, the old style Pro 20 we had way back in the early 2000s late 2000s you know the standard bank pro 20 with the dunk tanks and all of that i'd love to have that similar sort of vibe back to to the, to the stadiums pull all the crowds in bring back the catch a million because i guarantee you that's going to bring a lot of people into the stands yeah. if they know they can go to the stadium they have an opportunity to share in a million rand for catching the ball one-handed you'll definitely pull people in. So I'd love to see yeah. more initiatives like that coming back into this type of tournament um, to really draw the crowds because I don't want, nobody wants to watch a tournament on TV if it's 20% crowd, 20% capacity. You want to see stacked stadiums and that includes places like Durban where it's generally a poor crowd. So I'd love to see um, us really doing proper marketing, proper incentives for for. Or, um, spectators mm-hmm. to come to the crowd, uh, come to the venues, come to enjoy it. Don't make the ticket prices two hundred rand per person. Make it, make it affordable for families to come out and enjoy uh, the cricket. Yeah, I think I love that as well. I've got another idea that we maybe can throw out there. That maybe if someone out there is listening, I think how you involve club cricket. I think which is a very important, um, a very important structure. I think what happened, needs to happen to the other players that miss out on these tournaments, Division 2 players and the club cricketers. I would like to see a little tournament between the top, top, let's say the top clubs in the country that come together in a little tournament over maybe a week or, or a certain amount of time. The logistics, they can work out what is feasible. But ultimately, I say put a cap. So I'll say like, say 500 runs and say 10 wickets in the tournament. And the guys that make that mark and go beyond, say, three people from the top 10 gets gets a, uh, or let's not say three because let's say one from each, for each franchise. Let's say one particular spot is open for each one of these players that perform that go into the, they're allowed to go into the draft. Say, or even if you don't want to make it like that, you can even go a little bit more and say everybody that makes it into the 500 run category or a 10 wicket for this particular tournament, you get placed into the draft and have an opportunity to get get cited for this particular tournament. I think it will give incentive to everybody to want to go play club cricket, to play, to get into the team, to play in this tournament, to get their names into the hat for the draws. It might be a very good idea for them to be able to cross market, um, combine the two, um, market those particular games, because those are the next in line players that you want to see, the ones, the, 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 the diamonds in the rough that you want to talk about. So I think that's a way of maybe 
allowing those players to also have an opportunity to really put, to really create these stories for, because I think stories attracts people to the game. And if they can create these, these stories of guys that came out of nowhere and made it, and the T20, because I think that's what makes the T20 league so special as well. It's what I remember when the global T20 happened. It was, oh, these guys came from, from nothing and now they have a million rand contract and they're becoming superstars. And it, it, it gives a little bit more, I, I don't know, I, I feel depth to, to players and to the meaning of them being in these tournaments. I don't know. I just thought of that now while you guys were talking and thinking maybe that would be able, able might be able to be a good way to, to merge the club scene with this particular tournament. But Aditya, do you have any bright, bright ideas that you could throw at CSA? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to repeat an idea that I said a couple of weeks ago on a show, which is that they need to partner with the government to ensure that people from the townships can come and watch games at a relatively inexpensive cost. Because, you know, there has to be transportation for someone in, in, in Berea, Johannesburg, to be able to come to the Wanderers to watch a game. You know, someone in, in Brixton should be able to travel freely to be able to uh, to watch yeah. a game at the Wanderers. And it is it is far. It's so far. You know, similarly in, in Cape Town, I'd love for the, uh, for the Western Cape province to be able to arrange transportation for people from Mitchell's Plains and Noka Park and so on to be able to go to the the Newlands because it's not easy and transport is transport is an issue, right? And I don't know, you can tell me how much, of course how much is. public transportation like how much public transportation is available at eleven o'clock at night in Cape Town. Yeah. It's going to be very, very tough. Uh, maybe Cape Town mm -hmm. Stadium is a little bit easier. I mean, because of all the trains and all the buses that drive through there. But for other yeah. remote areas, like especially in the Eastern Cape, it's going to be difficult to travel uh, because everywhere, if you even if you travel by Uber, like I know when I when I travel when I go to PE and I go to the Eastern Cape, to travel around there is quite expensive if you're not living within the the main center where everything is. So and Joburg as well can be very pricey to travel, especially if you're going to travel between the two from Pretoria to Johannesburg. I mean, Werner will be able to give us Werner will be able to give us a lot more insight into that. But when, I, when I'm looking at the, the situation of getting this game to the townships, what needs to happen, and it's an idea that I, I put on Twitter not so long ago, is a fan park. I think fan parks are a brilliant idea to, to keep the game within the townships and to make sure that everybody's watching. And then you can have children, you can have cricket-related games for, for prizes. Maybe they can get a full trip to the stadium to watch a game with their family, four tickets and a trip including a trip to the stadium to go watch it as a family. You play cricket-related games. That means kids will then now pick up the bat and maybe try to hit a six or hit a target or something that can, can make it fun for the kids too so they can get introduced to cricket while they're watching the game on TV. Get them, in, in, get them into the craze of the sport and why it is so amazing. And then have, I think, what they did really well with the MSL, but what they did fantastically well with the MSL is their marketing with regards to at least I saw it locally. I don't know what they did. Verna, maybe you must tell me what they did in Joburg, etc. But I know that Paul Rocks and um, the Cape Town, uh, what was it called again? Um, the Cape Town Blitz, they went to different schools and had open days, almost like an open day feel where the players got to meet the um, got to meet the the play um, the teams. Um, the, sorry, the students got to meet the players and got to sign with them, and they played some games, some mini cricket on the field as well. It was a, a really awesome thing that they did. I mean, you, you see the likes of the Bray Shamsi and, and Faf Duplessis and all of them coming down to Wambuk Boys High School where there's a whole lot of kids um, around that wasn't for actually from the school only. It was from, from all around that came down, and there was a little event that happened on the weekend where they had some cricket being played, they had some Budavo stands, the DJ prizes, all of these things, and they had the Paul Rocks over there chatting and, and, and came, coming to meet and having a signing. So I like those ideas of having those signings at different schools. I think that will be an awesome thing. I think they need to actually do like a, a full-on... It's a pity that it's in January now, February. I'm hoping that they will get some time when kids go back to school as well um, to be able to go to schools and do their round. I think that you need to do a marketing trip. Like when artists do a full um, media tour when they when, before the CD comes out or a movie comes out, they'll go to different places to promote it. I think these teams need to do the same thing. I think they need to go to the different schools 
even if they just go to the schools around their stadium, just around the five kilometer radius around their stadium, that I feel is almost that's also enough. Um, just to get people in, interested and then go to the townships and have those days where you get to sign, give away some give away a cricket bat or something, or a couple of cricket balls or something away as an incent as as an extra to get people interested into cricket. So there's obviously a lot of things. Let's get your final words, guys. Um, Werner, let's get your final words, and then let's go to Aditya and get your final words. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. I'd love... Um, I, I also had the thought of a fan park um, where where the kids can come and... Or they can people can come and watch for free or for cheap, let's say, 10 rand entry, and then you get to play with your kids. Um, they have their own game at the side of the fan park or, or whatever. That's I, I love that idea. Um, get them involved in it. Have a nice jumbo screen that everybody can watch the cricket um, and, and enjoy it. And it's, it's going to be important to have a real buy-in from the local communities, as you say as well. Um, you want somebody that's saying, I'm the Pretoria, I'm a Pretoria capital for life type of thing. Why? The same way that the RCB fans are in the IPL, like the RCB for life, no matter how poor the RCB play or they never win a, if they never win a tournament, it doesn't matter. They'll be RCB for life. We need that type of fanatics. Huh? fanatics yeah. anyway we need that type of fanatics um for each team yeah uh, so that uh we can really get that buy-in from them and then they say okay well they they get excited every year for the tournament to start because their team is playing they'll have four games at home five games at home whatever it might be um and they can go and watch they can go and watch because it's not too expensive they have incentives they have to catch a million they have whatever the incentives might be maybe they have t-shirt cannons with the t-shirts of the home team or i don't i don't know whatever ideas they come up with they have people that are a lot more creative than i am um but uh, things that that can really draw crowds draw the, the the community into saying yeah i'm excited for the game tonight get the get everybody talking throughout the day saying okay yeah what, what about mm. this game tonight um i'm playing fantasy cricket because of this and that team i'm thinking this is how it's going to go this is the 11 that should be playing whatever get people talking about cricket in this country again because sometimes it goes through a bit of a dip people are feeling down because the proteas are struggling here and there or nothing is really said about the domestic system the, the domestic teams it's important to get that talk again and then and then obviously then if that means that if people start watching this t20 league and they see players performing then they might just tune into the domestic um, competitions as well to see these same players see if they can continue with that throughout the season see how they're going maybe check up on them seeing how are they going in the lead up to the tournament next year and that type of thing i think it's it's important to sort of be the talk of the town yep This time around, it's very important for Cricket South Africa to find a way to reach as many people as possible. I think the quality of cricket will be good, given the, the players involved in the league. But I think marketing is going to be really important. You know, the way content is produced for these teams is going to be important. And I think that's the big advantage of having IPL franchises. Because you look at the way... IPL franchises put out their content on all the social media. And in South Africa, you also have the advantage of, of TikTok. We don't even have TikTok. Uh, but if you look at the YouTube channels of all the teams that are involved in the SA20 League, you'll see that these guys do a really good job of putting out content on YouTube and so on. And if that happens in South Africa, if that is able to sort of capture the attention, the imagination of South African public will go a long way in ensuring that this tournament is a success. But mm. once again, I'm going to reiterate transport, safety of transport, as someone mentioned in, in the comment section, will be essential if you want to get people from the townships interested again in, mm -hmm. um, in cricket again. And, and I'm also going to reiterate, that if you want to know anything about this tournament, you need to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell for all future videos, eh? Because that's how you're going to get updated with everything. We're going to bring you exclusive interviews, exclusive features, um, reviews, previews of the games, etc. Hopefully, if it depend, dependable on time, guys. We're going to have to obviously plan it well. It's a lot of things going to be happening during that period. 
So stay tuned to this channel and stick with us and we'll try to give you the best possible updates on this particular game, on this particular tournament, etc. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to smash the like button, comment, share, subscribe, click the notification bell for all future videos. Also get involved with Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free straight to your inbox every month. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. Become a part of our Patreon account, help us grow South African cricket, promote South African cricket, and help us do many other things to try and grow Cricket Fanatics as well. By becoming a patron today, please get involved. The link on the screen as well as in the description. And go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all your general updates. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another daily show. Looking forward to chatting you guys a little bit more. There's a lot of things to discuss that are outside of this particular tournament that happened. Um, that we will be coming out over the next couple of days, of course. We've got some excellent content on the site currently. Got an awesome um, article by Ngama with Prasanna talking about South Africa's batting woes. And we have one on Aiden Markram by Daniel Gallen. Please go ahead and check those out and go read those stories too. And we're also going to be coming out with the latest issue of Clicker Fanatics magazine for you tomorrow. So... Stay tuned and get subscribed right away. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another daily show. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your evening, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Peace.